guys, it's Pokegirl7 here, and in today's video we have a ton of exciting Pokemon Go news. So today we're going to be talking about February Community Day, we're going to talk about some upcoming Safari Zone events that just got announced, and then we're going to talk about the Lunar New Year event. So there is a lot to talk about in today's video, so let's go ahead and get started. So February Community Day has just been announced, but it's a little bit different this time around. So for February Community Day, we're actually going to be able to vote for which Pokemon we want to be featured on that day for the first time ever. So this is huge news. We actually have four different Pokemon to choose from and in today's video we're going to talk about all four of the different options, which one I personally think is best and that sort of thing and then I'm also going to teach you guys how to vote. So let's go ahead and get into all the details. So the first community day option is going to be Vulpix community day. So if we had a Vulpix community day, of course shiny Vulpix would be released and this is Kanto Vulpix, not Alolan Vulpix. So we would have more frequent Vulpix finds with the shiny available and then during that event we would be able to evolve a Ninetales for an exclusive charge move. This exclusive charge move is going to be Weather Ball, which was recently just exclusive to Cast Form, and now it would be available for Ninetales as well, just the Kanto Ninetales, and it's going to be a fire type move instead of normal type. So Weather Ball for Cast Form is actually a normal type charge move, but the type changes depending on which Pokemon has it, so it would in fact be a fire type move for Ninetales. And for Cast Form, it's a three bar charge move with 60 attacks, so I'm assuming it would be the same for Ninetales, so it's some of a decent move the three bar charge attacks are pretty good because you can get in the charge attack really fast in battle especially pvp so it wouldn't be a terrible move and also shiny vulpix and shiny ninetales are beautiful i think shiny ninetales is one of the best kanto shinies ever so i think this community day would be a really cool option but let's talk about the other ones first the next option for community day would be machop so we have seen shiny machop in pokemon go before it got released like over a year ago now so it wouldn't be a new shiny Shiny release. But if we did have a Machop Community Day, we would get the exclusive move for Machamp. It would be Payback, which is a dark type move. So Machamp isn't a dark type Pokemon, so it wouldn't really have the stab or anything. You would rather have fighting type moves on a Machamp. Payback is a pretty decent dark type move though, I will say that. So I don't know, it's kind of like not really that exciting for me. I personally don't really want to vote for the Machop Community Day. Just because we've had the shiny for a while and I don't really want a dark type move on Machamp. Next up we have Rhyhorn Community Day. This is the one that everyone's talking about right now. I feel like this is probably going to be the one that wins, but let's talk about what it would be like. So of course we would get shiny Rhyhorn, shiny Rhydon, and shiny Rhyperior. And if we had a Rhyhorn Community Day, Rhyperior would get the exclusive charge move Rock Wrecker, which is the signature move for Rhyperior in the main series. And it's typically a really strong move in the main series. I think in the main series it has like 150 power or something. It would probably change in Pokemon Go. I'm not 100% sure, but either way, I know it's a really strong attack. So that would be a great rock type charge move for Rhyperior. So I feel like this is probably going to be the one that wins just because of that. People have been wanting a Rhyhorn Community Day for a long time. Uh, but let's move on to the last one before we start talking about that. Last but not least, well, kind of least, we have Dratini Community Day. So we've had a Dratini Community Day before, February 2018. We did have a Dratini Community Day, but if we had one again, of course we would be able to get Shiny Dratini, Dragonair, and Dragonite. And if you evolved a Dragonite during the event, you would get the exclusive fighting type move, Superpower. So... I guess it'd be kind of cool to have a fighting move on Dragonite. It's different. It would switch things up a little bit, but personally, I usually don't like to have moves that don't match up with the type of the user. So Dragonite is a flying dragon type, so I don't really want to have a fighting type on it personally. So I just feel like the Dratini Community Day is kind of like lackluster. We've already had one before. Um, the move is the only real difference. So I don't think Dratini Day is going to get voted for, but let's go over all the options as a whole now. Basically, I would say Vulpix Community Day is decent. The fire type charge move is pretty good for Ninetales, and the shiny is beautiful. Machop Community Day, I wouldn't really say is worth voting for that much, just because Machamp doesn't really need a dark type move. We have shiny Machop in the game already. Rhyhorn Community Day may be the best overall option for usefulness, like the Rock Wrecker move for Rhyperior is going to be very good, at least I would assume so. So I think Rhyhorn would be the best option if you want the usefulness. And then we have Dratini, you guys know how I feel about that one, I don't really think that one should win. So for me personally, I think if you're wanting the best shiny, go for Vulpix Community Day, and if you want the most useful Pokemon, go for Rhyhorn Community Day. So now let's talk about how we can actually vote for these Community Day Pokemon. So voting day is going to 
to be February 1st from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. local time. So it's a 24 hour voting day. And the winner is going to be announced on February 3rd. So the way to vote on February 1st is by completing field research tasks. So on the day of voting, every single Pokestop is gonna have a special field research task that can help you vote. So the four different tasks are going to be vote for Machop Community Day, catch 20 Pokemon, vote for Rhyhorn Community Day, catch 20 Pokemon, vote for Vulpix Community Day, catch 20 Pokemon, and vote for Dratini Community Day, catch 20 Pokemon. So basically, whenever you find the field research task that has the Pokemon's name that you want to win Community Day, keep that task and throw all of the other ones away. Keep completing as many of these tasks as you want. Every single task counts as another vote. So let's say you want Rhyhorn Community Day. Only keep the Rhyhorn task, throw all the other ones away so you don't accidentally vote for the wrong Pokemon. If you're only wanting Rhyhorn, just finish those tasks. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll have 24 hours to do that. Like I said, you can vote as many times as you want. Spin as many Pokestops as you can for that 24 hours. They said that every Pokestop will have a task in it, so if it doesn't for some reason, just throw it away, move on to another Pokestop. And I think this is a really cool way to vote for Community Day. I'm really happy that they're actually letting us choose what the Community Day Pokemon is going to be. I kind of hope they start doing this in the future too. Uh, some people were kind of irritated that they didn't give us a Porygon Community Day. They threw and Dratini and Machop for some reason but maybe in the future we'll have a chance to vote for Porygon or just any other Pokemon that we've all really been wanting maybe even Gibble Community Day I don't know we'll just find out but guys make sure you vote for whatever Pokemon you want for Community Day like I said Rhyhorn is probably the best option overall next up would be Vulpix but still just vote for whichever Pokemon you would like to see the most and whichever shiny you want and all that it's all up to us so let's just see what happens but anyways let's move on to the next bit of news because this next part is very exciting we actually got news of some future Safari Zone events in Pokemon Go and two of them are actually in the United States which is very exciting because we've never had one here before so let's talk about what all of these events are the first Safari Zone event for 2020 is going to be in Taiwan for the iconic Lantern Festival this Safari Zone event starts on February 6th and it ends on February 9th and during this event you're going to see more frequent electric type spawns such as Mareep, Electrite, Volby, Illumise and also Illumise typically isn't available in Taiwan it's actually a regional exclusive for other areas so that's going to be a huge deal and also during this event you can catch the unknown L and chime echo and there's most likely going to be a special shiny release we don't know what it's gonna be yet maybe Volby and Illumise that would be cool we don't know but usually with Safari Zone there's a new shiny so keep that in mind the next Safari Zone is going to be from March 27th to March 29th and that's going to be st. Louis Missouri so that's gonna be really cool the first ever US Safari Zone event Event. So that's going to be held in Tower Grove Park and this one's actually going to be a ticketed event So the Lantern Festival apparently is not a ticketed event You don't need a ticket to get in but that's not the case with the st. Louis event So you do need a ticket and it says here that tickets will go live on January 24th in the events tab in the Pokemon Go app and tickets are first come first serve so it's a lot like the go fest events we've had in the past where you have to jump on that and get a ticket as soon as possible because you don't know when they're going to sell out and there's actually going to be two different kinds of tickets available so first we have the general admission for twelve dollars and then we have early access which is eighteen dollars and basically with the early access you get to show up to the event two hours early so you get two extra hours of gameplay during the st louis safari zone you're going to see more frequent spawns from Mankey, unknown s Teddy Ursa, Snivy, Phariseed, and also Chatot. So Chatot is usually a regional exclusive to the Southern Hemisphere, so this is going to be a huge deal, and I actually really hope I get to go to this one. I'm not sure if I can make plans for that yet. I might try getting a ticket and then go from there, but it would be so cool to go just for that Chatot, because I don't know when I'm going to be over in the Southern Hemisphere, so I really think that one sounds like a lot of fun. All right, so now let's move on to the next Safari Zone. So the next one that got announced is for Liverpool United Kingdom. So this is going to be held in Sefton Park. Park, and it's going to start on April 17th and end on April 19th. So during this event, you're going to have more frequent spawns from Krabby, Dratini, Chinchow, Unknown V, Oshawott, and Relicanth. So Relicanth is typically exclusive to the Southwest Pacific region, so that's very exciting for the UK. This is going to be a ticketed event as well, and the tickets will go live on January 31st. We also have the general admission for 12 euros, and then the early access for 18 euros. And last but not least, we have another US Safari Zone event that I'm super excited about and I hope I get to go to. This one's going to be in Philadelphia. So this is going to be held from May 8th to May 10th and we have the general admission for $12, early access for $18, 
and they didn't give us any details other than that we don't know what kind of pokemon we're getting we don't know what regional is going to show up so very curious to see how that goes but yes this one's going to be a ticketed event as well like i said so keep all of that in mind but guys i can't believe they announced two safari zone us events and also one for the uk and taiwan as well so i feel like that's pretty diverse uh they actually are not done announcing events for the summer so we still have like go fest announcements and probably more safari zone announcements at the last half of the year so hopefully we can still hope for that uh australia safari zone maybe possibly and i guess we'll find out if we're getting three go fests again this year or not and where they're going to be so there's still some more announcements for the year these were just the first few events that they already have planned so i'm very excited for all of these i hope i can make it to at least the u.s ones maybe even a foreign one possibly but yeah we'll just see what happens with all of that but guys we actually have some more news to talk about it's going to be the lunar new year event news so this event is starting on friday january 24th at 1 p.m pacific time so let's talk about all the details of that so the the Lunar New Year event is basically to celebrate the Chinese New Year event. So like I said, it's starting on Friday and it's ending on Monday, February 3rd at 1 p.m. Pacific time. And during this event, we're going to have more frequent spawns from a red Pokemon, such as Charmeleon, Vulpix, Parasect, Voltorb, Jinx, Magmar, and much more. Also, we're getting Wild Gyarados spawns and this Wild Gyarados actually has a chance to be shiny. So up until now, Gyarados spawns have been super rare in the wild and you actually could not find a wild shiny Gyarados. So in honor of the Lunar New Year, they are letting us catch shiny wild Gyarados. I feel like that is such a big deal. I hope the spawns are kind of frequent so we actually stand a chance because I feel like that would be the best shiny ever to catch in the wild. And then next up, we're getting the release of the Gen 5 Pokemon Darumaka and it's going to be hatching from 7 kilometer eggs. So Darumaka evolves into Darmanitan and it's actually a pretty strong Pokemon so that's one that you definitely want to try to hatch and also during this event we're getting seven kilometer egg hatches from shuckle and fungus as well now let's talk about some event bonuses of the lunar new year event so the first one is that you can get rare candies from gifts from your friends also you have a higher chance of becoming lucky friends with your best friends on your friends list and you have an increased chance of lucky Pokemon when trading. So it's definitely like a friends and gift oriented event as well. And then we have one other special part of this event. It's actually a whole other event overlapped with it. So on Sunday, February 2nd from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. local time, we are getting Minchino Research Day. So Minchino is a Gen 5 Pokemon and it sort of got like a rat vibe to it because the Chinese New Year this year is the year of a rat. So I'm assuming that's why they went with this one. Basically this is going to be another limited research day like we've had in the past for Phoebus and Lotad and Clam Pearl and other things like that. So during this three hour event every single Pokestop is going to have a field research task that will reward a Minchino and this Pokemon can actually be found as shiny. So it's going to be a three hour shiny grind and also during this event we're going to have wild spawns of rat Pokemon. So it's definitely a rat themed event and also you're going to be able to hatch Minchino from five kilometer eggs as well. So I'm really happy that we're having another limited research day. I actually made a 2020 predictions and hopes video for Pokemon Go a couple of weeks ago and this is one of the things I asked for. I wanted more limited research event days so I'm so glad they did this. Okay guys so I know that I talked your heads off during this video but there's just so much going on and so much to talk about so let's do a quick recap. So first off we have the voting community day for the first time ever. Guys I'm personally going to be voting for Vulpix community day just because I really want to get that shiny nine tails you guys can vote for whatever you want but i'm definitely team vulpix uh like i said riparian is probably the smarter one to vote for in that case but just do whatever you want there and then also we have all the safari zone events to look forward to guys i can't believe that they announced two u.s events i'm very much looking forward to that and then we have the Mancino Research Day. So there's a lot to look forward to in Pokemon Go, guys. There's a lot happening all the time. I think 2020 is going to be a great year. So guys, I guess I'm going to wrap this video right here. But before I go, let me know in the comments down below which Community Day Pokemon you're going to vote for. Use the hashtag team and then the name of the Pokemon you're voting for. I am hashtag team Vulpix. And yeah, other than that, I guess that's all I have for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel to join my Gengar gang and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!